well, everything in the world comes to an end and like, we don't have the real world on anymore. Like this will end one day. What, I mean, what's Teresa and Melissa going to do? I mean, they're still going to be in the, their names will be known forever, but what are they going to do? I don't know. Maybe just, it's a transition. I'll have to tell you, it really is this, um, it's a whirlwind. And especially, you know, these guys who've been doing this for, you know, 10 years, they don't know anything but, you know, having a camera in their face. And so that I can't, eat. I had a hard time after just w one year of this, right? I had a super, super hard time not driving through my ego that said I needed to be seen. I needed to be heard. I have to have that camera on me. I can't just live in my life. Like all of a sudden it was just, my definition of what a happiness was became based on the show, not my children or my family. Like it was, that's what success was to me. And it, and it, I, I, I had such a hard time. I could never imagine what these guys could, could they ever go into that normal life and just disappear and live a beautiful life and then just truly enjoy your children enjoy your family and learn what life is truly truly about right because this is this ha the housewives will you will never get a sense of what, what life is about i can guarantee you they have no freaking clue none because they're they're heightened they're in this world that doesn't exist it's fake right and constantly distracted they're constantly distracted into this fake fake world yeah, I talk about that all the time on this show. Like the addiction of fame and cameras, it's so, yes. it's like a drug. It is. It's a drug. It is it nothing is. different than a drug. And I felt that drug. I felt it. And it took me a long time. I was in recovery. <laughs> a long time. I was getting withdrawal. Once, even to this day, I'll have withdrawals. I'm like, God, I got to get back on that show. I got to do something. I have to be seen. Get a camera on me. Right? And then I'm like, what the hell am I doing? No, just sit back. Just sit back, Amber. Just sit down. <laughs> Cause right, because it's not for money in the beginning. There's no money. It costs you money to go on the show the first year. So people do it yeah. for fame. People and that it's like, you know, yeah, if someone throws you in rehab, but most drugs you just keep doing until you're ready to go to rehab. With fame, you have no control mm -hmm. over when the drug is taken away. I mean it's cold turkey. and guess what you have a lot of you have a lot of enablers you have the fans you have andy you have the production crew you have the network there's a lot of enablers right? there's media there's photographers there's parties there's so many enablers in this that just fuel it right they just feed it and just yeah it's very difficult to to ever get back to a normal say. And I was, and I just felt that effect after one year and they forcibly, right. It was, it was, a, it was a forced situation where, you know, I didn't, I don't know. So that, that's it. But then eventually it was, it was, like after a year or whatever of being off it, you just started to be okay and just live life. It took me about three, four years to be okay. Really? Three, four years. Yeah. Like yeah. what you just wanted. Where I was, to be back on or some cameras well, I had a, I had a, um it's well there's a lot of different you know i i, I need to i I, not, I shouldn't talk about all this because i want to really write a book because it still really write a is book. i think i should because you there's, should. There's, there's so much psychology and human nature involved in this that the psychology of it yes is what's totally interesting I agree. So, but yeah, and I still, David, even still to this day, I, I have like issues. I love the psychology of it. I think that's what's interesting. I think that's the most interesting part of it. Like what it does to people and just, yeah. Which- Did you ever wonder, what, which, I'm sorry. I wonder, like, do you think Melissa and Teresa even know who they are anymore? No. I don't think so. 
I think that you become a heightened caricature of yourself and you will do anything for the show. And when the show is not on, you are literally sitting there saying, okay, seven things just happened. They're not even that interesting, but write those down and save that for next season. And let's do that on the show. And I do think that people do things like, you know, like if you look at like a Danielle Staub, I just, I think like, you know, getting married, divorced. I think there are, it depends how out there you are, but I think that you will do like anything, like a marriage, a divorce, like major shit in your life just so, for the show. So then, and then the, the line, the, it becomes so blurred on who's me, who's production, and who, what is the, what do people want me to see of me, right? So it's, yeah. I, it's, yeah, there's a lot going on. Which at the end of the day, it's like, I'm almost okay with all of that if you like kept it. Like, again, I know I'm saying this, I've never been there, but like, if like a Melissa were saying, the joke's on everyone else because I'm depositing a million dollars every year. And when this ends, I don't give a fuck and I'll go live my life. And so the joke's on, but I don't think that's the case for anyone. I think really the people that laugh are Andy, Bravo, the producers, and like, you're just the, the hired toy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes. toy. like, I mean, okay. Like right. you're, you're getting fame and a lot of money. Fine. Well, you're getting all that. Like, it's not like you're not getting anything, but like you're being manipulated how right. they want. And when it's over, you will be thrown out. You will be laying on the street with your bags everywhere, banging on the door to get back in. And the door, it'll be nobody even looking out the people. So like, if you know- and that, like, that was another thing. That? Like, I don't understand how people forget that. Like, you should just use them right. while they're using you. That's okay. Yeah. I have no problem with that. It's, you, everyone's using everyone and it's fine. But people don't, they forget it. But what were you going to say when they, when they were done with you? They, they, they no, were... it's, it's to your point. It's it, that feeling of being used um, and then discarded. That hurts too. I tell you, I really, it really hurts too. You know, like what? I don't know. Because there's no breakup period. It's just like, oh, Amber, sorry, we're not texting you back today. That's literally it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's right. wrong with me? Like, what did I do? What do I do differently? Listen, I know, I know my story, Jim. I, like I told, told you before, Jim. The moment you, uh, you know, I, I got, I, I got jumped, <laughs> and then Jim went berserk and started threatening the network, and the network went blah blah. Right. So that's um, it's not like they called me up and they're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. You know, we'll take care. Of you. No, they're like, you threatened you're off. That's it. Yeah. Does Jim not even like, yeah. like when you talk to like an Us Weekly, like, why are you commenting on this? Like Hates all these it. years later? Hates it. Every t single time he's like, why do you do it? My crack, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, it's not like you're calling them. Like, I mean, you know, you're not like yep. st stalking me, David, please let me sit down to do a follow up because, you know, we recorded months ago. It's like, I'm the one calling you. So, I mean, are you just people still want to hear, you know, it's like a, it's like a sorority forever, but it will end. It will end. So I just think like the Teresa's and Melissa's and like, however, you just, you better have some plan. I mean, the fame yeah. doesn't go away. Yeah. I mean, like everyone still remembers everyone's name per se on an extent.